we're live, but we have screaming kids. That's why we're late. So sorry about that. <laughs> How is we everybody? Do, we do have a lot to talk about tonight. We do have a lot to talk about. I'm, I'm just going to go get him out. That's fine. Aiden's getting a baby, so sorry about that. We were running a little late, supper. We were trying to get things done. Uh, it's just been a long, long, long day. So, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. So, we'll give everybody time to get on. And then, actually, I'm trying to get set up myself to make sure I see everything. All right. Baby's going to Aiden right now. So, like Misty said, we have got a ton. Uh, to talk about we missed last Wednesday night having a family night and uh, it's been crazy since then so hey supper at seven how are you uh, you are one of the first ones I think there's a few on but Grammy Karen how are you mommy's coming so is everyone doing well have y'all been doing good Um, we had, uh, uh, last Wednesday, the reason we were off, we, our kids play soccer. Uh, we're homeschoolers, so, uh, they play a little recreational soccer and then do some, uh, um, some cross country. So we were taking the, the Wednesday off. So excuse that, but we'll talk about kind of the last two weeks and what's been going on around the farm. It's been crazy busy. Uh, hey, resolution 317. How are you? But, uh, it's been really busy. We'll kind of hit on uh, really some transition in the garden, transition with cows, transition with bees, um, talk about what we did tonight. So it's been a, a busy, busy last two weeks, I would I would say. And I got a crick in my neck. I did something <laughs> to it. So if you see me turn like this, it's my whole body. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I think hey, I'm most heaven, excited about the, the netting and all. We've shown you all that. Uh, that we've got up in the garden, yeah. but I just put 30 eggs in the incubator. That's right. Um, I kindled those and two were not fertilized. Um, so I actually have 28 that I'm expecting to hatch unless um, one of them does a like a failure to thrive decides not to um, keep developing for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So, but as of right now, when I checked them last, I'm expecting 28 on the third of October. Is it the third? I think the second or the third yeah. of October will be a full 21 days. So we're really excited about that. We're going to hatch those out and um, those will end up going in our garden to kind of keep our garden That's awesome piece prepared. Of so, yeah. So Missy's been doing incubation. We have actually got our next video tomorrow is on. Uh, incubation on candling our eggs. How to, to candle the eggs. If um if we have quitters, winners, or yokers. So uh, you'll see that tomorrow on our video. So hey Darlene, how are you? Oh my gosh, I wish you'd pass your rain down here. It we has need, been probably oh September gosh, three, they, probably three they've weeks had a lot of rain. rain. We've had very, very no, little No, we've rain. not had three weeks. It's been three weeks of uh uh hey, hey Ms. Ms. Paul, Paul, Joe. Joe. Hey single man. Uh, we have had three weeks of drought and we still have probably another two weeks at least. Sorry, I'm changing that screen. Um, but Missy's been doing the incubation. So we'll have a candle in video tomorrow on our three minutes with the max of how to candle eggs. So we'll be expecting those 28 chicks. Like I said, if, if all goes well, all continue and develop and, and all hatch out. Normally, we'll normally this time of year, we're kind of at a break, but man, I tell you, I think we've been Seems just like we as busy this year. Yeah. Even since spring. So um, between the permaculture chickens coming, uh, us getting ready to go on trips. Hey, little um, feet farm homestead. Uh, we got the peas planted, which are doing wonderful. They look great. Um, they, they really are. I, if, you, if you're not doing silage tarps using, um, uh, again, the flamethrower has been awesome, but if you're not using silage mm -hmm. tarps. And, and doing like a lasagna method gardening, I, I would challenge you to do it. Us. It really has been a great addition to our farm. Mm -hmm. But um, the peas are doing great. Um, and, and then, again, it's just a big transition this time. So we've, we've got, like Missy said, the permaculture chickens. Uh, I think our other chickens are starting to molt a little bit, so our egg production's down. Uh, we've got some new bedding in for them, as y'all saw in the last few videos. So um, – I don't know where they're at. They're, they're, they're doing okay. Today was a slack day. So I'm hoping that's just they're molting. 
kind of getting out of there. We're going to move some of those older chickens anyway out of there soon. So Yeah, we're going to try hey, country to, homestead preacher. the ones that are actually aren't laying eggs well, we're going to they actually go to the netting first. Ha hopefully transition those into the netting with the other ones. Um, we should have a video. We're going our we're fixing to make our chicken tractor and also the little chick shawl, basically kind of the Justin Rhodes plan, but both those will be coming up, getting ready for the permaculture bed in the garden. So and we're excited about that because this right. is the first time we've transitioned chickens to the garden area. So it'll kind of be a learning experience for us. Thankfully, we do have a great Pyrenees and she is, I would Excellent say, animals. very good protector of animals. So we're super excited um, that hopefully once we get them out there and um, I think she'll do a pretty good job of protecting them, hope, hopefully. <laughs> Um, Little Feet Farm Homestead, uh, our cow is doing great. I just checked on her, just gave her uh, some loving a while ago. Did, did you um, feel her bag? Yes. Yeah, well, she's, she is still a little tight. Yeah, her name is Elsa. Um, she's she such is, a sweet girl. Oh, she's so we sweet. Love and, our and really, she like looks at me and like with these little sad eyes, like, what are you not feeding me for and being sweet to me anymore? So uh, I've been disking our winter plots, again, transitioning. I've been disking our winter plots. Well, and getting before those ready. you get started, let's go to for those that don't know what's been going on okay, with, with Elsa. Elsa. Okay. Um, hey, Steph T5. So, about a week and a half or two weeks two ago weeks. now, yeah. um, we started noticing that she was having, well, Colby had mentioned even a few days before that, that she just wasn't acting right. She wasn't eating as much. Is this manly? <laughs> I don't think this is manly. <laughs> anyway, said that she just what didn't see, really seem herself. So a few days later, so Craig Smith. Um, we were leaving the house and hey, we the passed uh, the field where she stays. And I know she was laying down and I noticed her breathing was very heavy. It was very labored. So initially we thought that she probably had heat exhaustion because it's very, very hot, very, very dry. And she's lactating and pregnant. Right. So we figured the heat had probably really just taken a toll on her. So we decided to watch her for a few days and see how she was doing. And um, she, wa she wasn't getting any better. Her breathing was getting more and more labored. Um, she just was really struggling. So, we contacted the vet to come out and look at her. We had also consulted some with the Rhodes family, um, just kind of getting their advice and opinion on what we should do. At the point where we found ourselves, I would say that um, we felt like she needed treatment as soon as possible. Um, and again, we're not, we, we try not to treat with antibiotics. We try not to treat, we try to do all natural, especially with cows. Because we are drinking their milk. Well, and Colby but, was, we'd done things yeah. like Colby was giving her extra minerals, extra hay. We made sure she had plenty of clean water. We were doing apple cider vinegar. We upped her, her, uh, her rations, basically her dairy rations, which are heavy minerals uh, as well. And vitamins. We upped that too, trying to, you know, just trying to do everything we could. And we so, felt like if we delayed care any longer because of the situation, we would have really been. Yeah, it just wasn't. Good we for would health. have really been. We would have really been. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? We would mm. have been in a very walking a fine line of of jeopardizing right. playing with her health because she was very very sick. Um, so we agreed that we didn't have anything on hand. We would have had to wait for other treatments had we ordered anything. So we agreed to go ahead and let her get antibiotics. And within a day, There's I would say difference. you could see a huge difference yeah. in the way she acted and her, even her increase in eating, she was up on her feet she, more. Um, um, she, what was so amazing is that we um, just in that day, Again, you hate it because it is a transition for us. As you saw the last two videos, it's kind of been odd for me. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how to take it. So just spending time with her tonight, just seeing her being her back herself, mm -hmm. like rambunctious, not rambunctious, excuse me, just kind of lively. lively. You know, and she's see, never, she had gotten to the point where I told Colby that when I was going out watching her for several days, she wasn't up on her feet much. She was laying down a whole lot. She, um, and she loves to, um, especially with me, I guess, because I'm, I'm always with her every morning. She'd always love to come and she'd put her head just right here, just kind of like 
I don't know if it was just laying it on me or just it felt comfort for her, but she hadn't done that, but she started doing that again tonight. So it makes me feel that she's, she's kind of getting back to herself. Now, the thing we right. were watching is with her being a, a lactating Jersey, it's just making sure that we are, we're drying her the right way. All right. Uh, so with approach, all that being said, she is doing better by the way. We, because she's due in, in probably January, we were fixing to dry her up anyway for the sake of 1st. her and her calf. Right. So because we gave her the antibiotic, we would have been dumping for 14 days for at least two weeks. So at that point, we were, and it would have been stressing her health because we were taking so much from her. We would have been delaying her, her, her wellness. Her wellness in order to get milk that we were dumping. Right. And and to just continue milking for just a few weeks after that. So for us trying to go through all the options and what made sense, what was the smartest and what was the best for her, um, we decided to dry her up. So that's why and Colby's not milking anymore. Two ways, two ways to dry up. You know, we were we've we I've heard two ways. You 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 start weaning off and almost like you would um, just slowly but surely like wean a her off, like a, a like regression, a like a true wean regression, like you would a calf, I guess, uh, for a meat cow or something. But um, hey, thanks, Simple Grower. Thanks for coming by. Um, but another way is just stop cold turkey. Um, I've always heard both ways. I've heard pluses and minuses. Like we, like Pros anything in homesteading, <laughs> you know, there's always a million ways to do Take something. Off mania, we did not want to do. We did not want to do the chemical. I know you can do a dry deal. Uh, we didn't want to do that. That's not what we were looking for at all. So I, I've always heard just stop immediately with dairy farmers around here. Um, but we started seeing some some uh, homesteaders who would who would do a weaning process which didn't seem like that would fit for us so we did ask our vet what he thought he said the same thing just stop, stop immediately so no i checked her today i right. went out i have been keeping a really close eye on her just to make sure she wasn't getting real red or anything like that but when i went out today and hey, checked on man. her i actually felt of her bag in the field because she's very people friendly she, she lets us go up and pet man. her and i just smile when i think about her she's just now our other jersey will not let you do that so <laughs> She, we're gonna have a, a real fun time <laughs> breaking her, and we'll get. Cap. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about get that. we'll get on Allie next. So anyway, hey, Farms. um, I went out and checked her in her front two quarters feel Thanks, Kim. pretty soft, but the back two are still real real That's tight. That's her heavier chambers too. Right. She was she never holds really hanging. more milk back there. Right, she was not really heavy in her uh, front two chambers. Usually she'd milk about a quart each. But we are and a, then a gallon out of the back. Too. A week into this today. But she's not so leaking. She was dripping a little bit, like for just about a little two, bit days, for two days. She was leaking. But you know she has been great. She's doing great. Her health she is back up. She looks amazing. Um, her breathing is under control. And we just, she I just spent some so time good. just loving on her a while ago. So she, she's in. She she's is in doing really better. good. Now, as we transition her to drying her off, getting her ready for our New Year's baby, which is not what we wanted, but. It's how it failed. Um, and, and one good thing is it gives us comfort because she's back with our Thank bull. Thank you, Kim. And our bull has not even thought about her. So it, that's a good sign for me. So we're, we're really pleased where she's at. Now, we've got Allie by herself. Uh, Allie is. We've got two vacations coming up. Yeah. Which well, is they're great not, that they're we're not homesteading milking. vacations. So, yeah. Uh, but basically, Allie is very strong willed. She's, she's our very alpha. Stubborn. If you've seen any videos, she's the one. She's going to be. You know, she's going to be uh, bellowing. She's the she's boss. Just, she's the boss. She's the smallest she big cow. She thinks she's the boss of us, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, and that's the problem. And then, don't get me wrong. She can be a sweetheart, but she is stubborn. And, and to a point where the last, I put her in the stanchion the other day, so she did better then. But when I first did this first video of us stopping Elsa, that morning was a terrible <laughs> morning. Um, you know, and I agree. Single man, I'll, st I'll hit back on that, too. Um, mm -hmm. but. Allie has been doing great on stanchion training. However, because like Missy said, we, we're going to HOA in October. We have, we're going to the Stivers in November. Um, Food Forest, I owe you a big apology. We we cannot find your address. I lost it. It's my fault. I need to get your address, Food Forest. I'm sorry. We got your hat out Howie, on the counter. I've got it's it on there. the counter. It's been there for about a week I know. now. I, I know. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyways, back to the story. I'm sorry getting to, involved in the comments. Um, Allie has been doing good, but... We're trying to figure out hobbles don't really work for Allie because I can't, you know, if you try to touch her legs, 
um, she she starts to want to kick, which that's what we're learning. Hey, we're teaching. Garden. Uh, we're teaching and trying to do the best we can. Um, so what I've, I've done, I've done some research. We, mm-hmm. We've looked at scent straps. We've looked at every aspect of uh, the best way to teach her. And not only for me, but remember, I'm leaving. So I got a, a milker coming in. I need to make sure that they're prepared. And well, they're not you haven't kick. told them that she's supposed to be yeah. having like very soon. Actually, Within when the vet was next here, two weeks. actually, when he was here, he looked at her and said, I'm pretty sure that she's lost her mucus plug and she's got some discharge. Up, so I'm pretty sure she's probably closer than you <laughs> think. So yeah. And that's not that. We were trying it's to a, get after HOA. Yeah, so, we were. Uh, that's what we were hoping for. I'm not. She may have her baby before. You know, we just don't know at this point. I told Colby I felt like she probably had a little bit more time. Supposed to be the fifteenth. But the when a vet looks at her and says she's probably closer vet. than he's you think, vet. then you know, I don't know. So, but we, we'll see. We that bought, is kind of exciting, um, but then it's kind of not exciting at the same time. She's done good though. She she did some snatching training the other day. I got her in. Um, again, when I do that, I feel all over, I rub all over, I pet her, I touch her udders, I, I kind of go through, a, I'll get a warm rag like I was doing, or getting ready to, 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 to actually milk her, and she's been doing better. Now, every once in a while, she'll get the, the gumption to try to kick me. So well, we Lord, bought, our concern is, is, is we're going to be gone if she has this baby while we're gone or right before we go then we've got to try to figure out a plan. So that's when I, that's, that's our concern. So we bought um, a cow can't kick. It's uh, K-O-W, K-A-N-T, K-I-C-K. And the whole purpose of that is, is almost like a big horseshoe, a big wishbone. Uh, and I think that's going to be a great fit for us. We, we looked at the scent strap, looked at the ho- uh, hobbles. Um, all those things are good, but I don't think they're going to fit our cow the way they need to just because she's a smaller jersey. So, um, you know, we're excited about that and we're going to see how that works with her. She's done great, but I need to make sure we are getting prepared for just in case we're gone or just in case we're, we're actually at HOA. Um, single man, just to hit on cold turkey on the mastitis, you're exactly yeah, right. That. Um, it's right here. Okay. Um, the, the things we were looking at was looking at weaning and slowly weaning because we don't, we don't drop dip, uh, which is a, a chemical. We don't use that. Uh, the reason we decided to do a cold turkey, she, she had already almost weaned herself down because of her sickness she was going mm-hmm. through. So she went from a gallon to, I mean, a gallon and a half to about a gallon and, and really her teetered on. Her production was really down. Her, yeah, her production she was down. She wasn't eaten either. Her two she front quarters good. are not, she's not a real heavy milker in her two front quarters anyway. So I was really worried about her back, back chambers. Um, but she has done extremely well with doing a complete draw off. So uh, far, that's right. we're a week we, into it. She's still kind of tight back there. But not red, not swollen, mm-hmm. not not too hot. Uh, I checked her again a while ago. She does, I mean, again, she has milk, but it's, it's not to a point where it's causing issues. Uh, I talked again to our vet who's just, he's actually a true cattle vet. Um, and he, he, he advised the same way he thinks. He thinks we did the right thing. So, Overlord so far, said we're doing that they good. did have to do the medicine because the drop medicine because they right. are already had. They were already dealing with mastitis, and they oh, didn't gosh, have yeah. the chance of it causing more Definitely. damage. Well, so far she has done well. Um, but we are I've checking been, her. Yeah, exactly I've right. been. I have kept a very close eye on her. I went out in the field with her today, and while she was eating, you know, I reached down and just checked on her, and and she seems to be doing good. She's still definitely holding some milk <clears throat> back there, um, and it's still pretty tight. And she's not a heavy bagged cow. I know that makes but a huge she's difference too. Good. She she was never a you know two and a half gallon cow. So um, Allie might be that. Yeah, Allie might Allie's be because Allie's bag actually is way bigger, right, she's and actually she's actually bag. way smaller than yeah. Elsa. But her she's her one bag of those cows that almost bigger. dragged you around. It's gonna be crazy. So, um, thanks, Food Forest. Again, I'm so sorry. Your cat. I mean, like it's been sitting on my counter actually before we came on. I said I've got to get his address. I just couldn't find it. So I'm sorry. Overlook that. said I would be a nervous wreck worrying. I I I, I kind of am. Um, I, I think he probably is too. Just don't want to admit to it. But we um on on Elsa. on a, oh no on oh, Allie. Allie being yeah. gone because it's like sometime before or sometime after or, the thing and then is, it falls into our next trip we, sometime before or sometime after. So you got a problem over there. Oh, I got a stinker. <laughs> 
So, the, yeah, we are a little concerned, especially especially because she's never been milked before. And the guy that's going to be coming to help it's us. typically a goat milker. Yeah, he's not extremely familiar with our cows. Mm -hmm. And she's very difficult. But so, all of the, the, the beauty things of, together kind of makes us a little The beauty that, that makes me a, a little bit feel a little bit better. Um, hopefully, of course, her calf is safe and, and does well. And she milks her calf. Um, one good thing about having the calf is she is a first time heifer. So I'm hoping that that makes a huge difference to where if she's pushing heavy colostrum or she's pushing so much right there to where until we got back, until we got established, she would be okay. Cause I've got enough cattle buddies who if we had to, we could get her milked at least until I got back. Um, hey, Rob's yard, Houston area. Um, but you know, that's, that's, that's kind of concern right now. So that's our transitions with our milk cows. Um, Elsa's kind of doing, she's doing great, but again, we lost that extra, you know, month basically of milking her. Um, Allie is coming around and we've got her by herself really working on stanchion training. And really when she's with other cows, you know, cows are hurting an animal. Everybody knows that. Hey, United, we stand. Um, but the, the thing about Allie is when she's around more cows, she wants to be a, a bully to them. So by having her alone just to try to train her, she's not having to fight for food. She's not having to fight for hay. She's not having to do anything but just be by herself. I think that's helping her do better on her stanchion training. So we're doing really good with her Been real pleased with her. I'm hoping the cow can't kit kit will help um, with our milker coming in while we're going to HOA and then while we're going to the stivers in November. So that's our transitions for um, our cows. Um, as we talk about cows, we were doing some discing today, getting our plots ready for, you know, the, um, the winter season. We are taking of our nine paddocks, really eight, but not, we have nine. This one's just kind of like a holding paddock, but of our eight paddocks, we're actually taking four and we're making those winter paddocks. So we've dissed those up today, getting those ready as we plant rye and we will lime with that and then put some fer or chicken fertilizer out with that as well. So I'm hoping that will will do well hey chaos and grace thank y'all for coming by uh the hive and the homestead hey guys um yeah we saw like with the mucus plug overlook i, I think that that's gonna put her right when we're going to hoa so that's a little a little bit of a nerve-wracking situation so but uh, the paddocks are doing great um the rotational grazing plan has been excellent for us um even in this this we've had temperature kind of been messed up for about three weeks um We've not had any rain, so it's been very, very dry. So, you know, that's that's not been good either. But, um, you know, our grass has held up. And, again, we've, we've started doing some mm -hmm. uh, some prepping for fall and winter grass. So we're excited Sorry, about that Aiden too. Sorry, Aiden said so. I had to rescue him. Yeah, he's not going to change a dirty diaper. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can only give him so much. So uh, he thought about adding uh, wheat or oats to your rye. I have been thinking about it. I'm, actually, I do add oats. Um, I'm just – to be honest with you, VW Family Farm, what I do is um, I buy a, a a deer mix of oats, clover, rye, um, and then uh, it's got some wheat in it too. Wheat doesn't do real well. It does, but it, it the wheat here where we plant it is really wet and boggy in our deer area. So, But that's, that's the mix I use when I plant my deer plots. So during the winter, I'll plant heavy rye in my winter paddocks, and then I'll come back and put more of that in too because it throws in it throws in clover, which deer and cow love. It throws in uh, wheat, which we don't see a lot of, but it does th show a lot of oats. And then again, it gives a good transition with that deer plot grass. It gives a good transition as we get close to spring because it's up and growing and doing great with the red clover and the white clover really coming up. So it's great for bees. It's great for the transition between rye dine and bahia and Bermuda coming back. So it really does well. So that's what I did last year, and my cows absolutely loved it. Hey, Actually, they didn't want to come out of the grass. Have you some of the people that come in? Yes, I said, hey, to everybody. It was good that uh, Chaos and Grace mm -hmm. came by. Hive in the homestead. We give y'all pure, full permission to go back and, and binge watch all our <laughs> videos. Okay. Just have to get that mm -hmm. off there. Uh, thank you, single man. Um, but basically that's what we do VW family farm. And cause again, it, it benefits not only our bees as we come closer to spring, but it also benefits uh cow and then Southern provides Bless deer. Homestead. Hey there. Hey Southern Bless Homestead. So we've talked about the chickens and the eggs, the transitions with the cows. Um, maybe we hadn't bees? touched on the bees and the 
Well, first, ex- we had a first experience with the bees yeah, this week, um, too. Uh, yes, this is our first year to go uh, to HOA. We're super excited. Yeah, definitely. Um, full thing, full uh, disclosure on bees. Bees, we love bees. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, we have bought packaged bees in the past, and we have bought, and they're, they're local bees. They're not, they're, they're from a, a local farmer, a local apiary. But what we did was we bought uh, four basically hives over the lifetime of us being bee farmers. Um, one good thing is we've added so much. We, we, and so when we lose one, like we lost one, uh, two days ago and we hated to lose them. We lost them to, um, uh, wax moths, which is the worst way to lose a hive. Yep. Um, but the, the beauty of losing is remember with bees and because you have hives, you're always able to make more bees. So, um, we split a lot in the spring and actually we're, we're inundated right now. We have 13 hives and that's for anybody who knows bees. That's a lot of bees. Uh, mm-hmm. and that's a lot of, uh, expense and, and beekeeping. So it was a little uh, discouraging though, to see, see if those, if that evidence. And it was, um, I'm ready for it. VW. <laughs> it, I will say this when I got the, when we were taking the frames and stuff out and I started seeing the, um, I mean, would you, would they be considered worms? What would you actually call Yeah, it's just a larva. Basically, uh, I took all of that to the chickens and fed the the chickens with all of that. Have you watched our video today? No, I haven't. It's bad when my wife doesn't even watch our video. I have had five kids homeschooling and cleaning all day. I think you need to go watch the video right now. (laughs) No, like she said, though, we, we, we have never had wax moth, never had an issue with them, never had problems with mites. We do see hive beetles, but we treat those uh, hive beetles. Uh, but you're right, hive beetle larva. Basically, yep. what happens is when hive beetles get in there, hive beetles, if they're not controlled, they can cause hive beetle larva, which can cause wax moths coming in, which can destroy your hive. Um, one good thing is this was our weakest hive. We knew um, it was a weak hive. It was a weak okay. hive. And we've tried and tried, debate it with more open brood, closed brood, and more bees. It just never could pull out. So um, it, it's, it's one of those things you hate to see. You hate to lose them. But at the same time, I'm hoping that um, it's, it was it was really unhealthy high from the get-go. We, we tried to nurse it back to health, and it just never did. So we're still plus tons. There was tons. a question asking if it was hard. That we uh, a few things. Yes, little I've never had bees. Dead. Is it hard? To me, and, and if B, BW, if you want to chi- chime in, and, and Honey in the Homestead, some of you other beekeepers, I love bees. Bees are not hard to me I, because I have a passion for them. Um, I, I wouldn't hated say them that it was first. hard. I would say you need to do learn. your research. Yeah. Um, because Always there are things that you need to know. Sets of bees. You never want just a bee apiary with one beehive. And again, other beekeepers chime in, but you always want at least two because if you have a weak hive or you're trying to learn a hive, it's better to have another hive to say, okay, what am I doing wrong or what am I doing right? Chaos this one and Grace one, so. they're hoping to start bees in the spring. Love bees. Oh, um, I, we we highly recommend it. I mean, right. it has been a great addition to our farm. And, and this is our. Talking about money making uh, on the homestead. We, we Last spring was our, this past spring was our first full year. We, um, our, we're we entrepreneurs in everything that we do. And, and, and Misty would attest to that too. Uh, we, we work outside our farm, but we've also learned how to make money on our farm. Uh, one way, I'm telling you, bees do really well. Um, I, if you're not selling bees, that's okay. I don't sell my bees unless it's just for a reason. The hive in the homestead, a mentor is a great advice. Absolutely. We had a great have mentor here. Have somebody that can help you for and sure. It needs to be a mentor that's used to your area too. Not okay. that you can't learn right. from busy videos because I watch YouTube videos on beekeeping all the time. I love watching bees videos of BW Farms uh, with, for bees because you learn so much from so many people. But when you have a local apiary uh, close that you can learn from a mentor that's been doing it for years, it really does mm-hmm. help. But like I said, um, we we love them. Uh, you learn so much about them because you can always, they, they, they make money for you. I and mean, people love honey and will spend a lot of money on it. Uh, so it does well. Uh, we sell wax. I mean, we, we make byproducts out of wax, but we, I mean, like we sold, I mean, we're selling uh, it's like a $12 per pound or something for wax. And that's crazy, but that's, that's, that's good. That's what you want to do. So you want to make money. 
it is pretty expensive getting into it because you have Initially, to have your stuff. Initially, it is an expense. But yeah. it's it's probably the easiest way to make your money back for your home. It is in our area. Yeah, in our sure. area because we, we sell our honey and, and do very well on it. So, uh, And then Misty makes a ton of product with our honey and with our wax. Beeswax, skin salve, diaper rash cream, sunscreen. I mean, your wax can go, your wax goes into all those things. Um, I And what's so crazy, I am allergic to well, I say I'm allergic. You're, I'm not like mildly I'm allergic. mildly allergic to bees. Uh, so I, you'll see me a lot of times. I'm usually double gloved, and the reason is is because they I, I must taste good because they will tear me up. Uh, but usually, if <laughs> I'm going into bother me. if I'm going into a hive, I'm usually uh, double gloved just because of that because they will smoke me when they can. <laughs> I'm telling you, they they love eating me. They really do. <laughs> but he usually it's a localized swelling that happens. So. If it usually gets stung multiple times, at least one of those stings are going to be huge. Uh, VW so. Family Farm, the, the most I've been stung in, a, I would say there's two occasions. Uh, one, I was stupid and forgot to, I, I was like, these bees, they know me. They know me. We're buddies. And I didn't smoke them. And I was like, I'll just check them, make sure they're doing good. And I went into the hive and they lit me up. It was up. bad. I'm talking about lit me up. So. Uh, every time I start a video, I'm always like, smoke them. They, that way they know you're there. I've always heard that. I've always done that. But uh, I did not do it that time, and they showed me who's boss. Um, one other time, my daughter, and we've told this story, but my daughter, um, <clears throat> I cut grass around them. And, and that's why if you watch the video of us getting them off the ground, I was trying to get them a little bit better so I can weed it around them and all that. North Star Prep Show, hey, how are you? Um, but my daughter, after I cut and weed eat, they go crazy. No matter about what I do, they, you know, they just go crazy because I'm disturbing them. So my daughter ran over there and just, I mean, they just like swarmed attacked her. I mean, it was like 50. I mean, just in all her in her hair. hair. She was going crazy. So I'm on the mower. And of course, I don't have anything on either. So I run over there, um, knock them off her. Well, again, they love to light me up. So it's like they were like, huh? They, and they just. They still on Colby more than they still on her. Yeah. So they still on her like three times. But, but then they I were got all lit up. in her hair. No, they did get. They got her more than that. A lot of it was. It was a lot of were on her back. And then some remember. were on, some were in her head. Most of them were on her back. It was very but, scary. Stephanie <laughs> five. That was probably one of the worst things because. Mm -hmm. At the but time, she we didn't, didn't know. know. Yeah, she, she didn't, didn't know. know. And she thought that Colby was still over in that area. So she was running over there to see him. And he had just weed eated and got them all wound up. And so when she went in their area, they just. Um, most painful place I've been stung. Would you say my wrist that time? Or would you say, no, I got stung right there. That right there, I got stung. And it up here. It's like this. And you ever see those cartoons like where their their chin's like this funny. big? My chin was like huge. I walked into work the next day, like, what is something's changed? You're something looks different on you. And it was like my chin was like this big. And that was probably the worst one because he it was like he it was a kamikaze suicide mission and she was gonna take me out and she did. And he bad. had a real bad one on his wrist where his whole, I, I got from, so his, from his knuckles to right? his elbow so was that? all swollen and he couldn't move his wrist. <laughs> and he had a spot like that on his leg too, a, a, a few times yeah. on his leg. I'm telling you, they like me, man. They like me. Um, uh, BW said they could have killed me yesterday. I'm curious to know what happened. Yeah, we'll have to watch that video when you get it out. Uh, Hive in the Homestead, we we make, Misty makes tons of soap. I help her a little bit, but that is her baby. And I don't know if y'all watched, uh, well, the video coming up with the, or no, the last three minute Thursday, you showed the stack of soap. We probably got, oh, how many yeah. bars have we got now? Like 200 and something? Close probably to 300 because you made two more yeah. batches. We have about 300 bars of soap that will go up for Christmas again. Christmas present. Homestead money. That's what we do around here. So we learn how to make it. Misty's been putting I've, all over I've Facebook, taken so. orders off of just Facebook advertisement. <clears throat> and I have really grown my name here locally in our area with the soap because it's so, I mean, you can't get any more simple and Ooh, cleaner than the products that are in it. And, um, I mean, people love it, and it's so healthy. I mean, and it smells amazing too. I always say I'm gonna buy EpiPen. I really, I really do need one, by the way. Our insurance doesn't cover. I know. That, I really do need one, though. It's kind of crazy. Um, yes. Seeing EpiPen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Chaos and Grace. Misty loves making soap, and and truly, we love using. It. We've used it for years now. I can't. 
on how long we've used your show. A little over uh, three we, years, almost four We years. love it. I mean, we I, it'd be hard for us to go back to anything else. So. Um, Actually yeah, made Aaliyah, that one four-pound batch of lavender, lavender this morning and another four-pound batch of peppermint, but those are all... North Star Prep are all Christmas presents. I don't know if they're just getting aggressive from that. Most bees are aggressive mm -hmm. because either they're getting ready to swarm or they're they're out of food or they feel like their box is not providing enough. Uh, I love going into a set of bees and they're quiet and reserved. That mean, usually um, means they have a queen. That means too. the queen's they're doing queenless, well. They're usually more aggressive. Um, I have well. one hive, which I, I divided. So now I have two hives of that same um, aggressive hive. I'm not sure if they're Italian bees. We have Italian bees on every other one, but I'm not sure if these are Italian. They may be something else. But when I tell you they are aggressive, they're very aggressive. And you have to really smoke Thank them Thank you, Overlook Valley. Now, see Overlook Valley. Um, now, the thing is, with our aggressive bees, I like that. I like the benefit of aggressive bees. Uh, well, they're, they, for they us, tend they're to be, usually harder workers. Yeah, too. they tend to be harder workers. So I'm getting a heavier laying queen uh, and I'm getting more honey out of those hives. Mm -hmm. So if this, the spinoff for me is I have I do have some lackadaisical bees that tend to be a little bit um, not as, as, as productive, but then I have very aggressive that are productive. Um, that's that's true, too. Robbing does make them very aggressive. What I think when that hive, I told you that was weak and it was causing issues. I truly believe what that was, was it was so weak because the biggest hive is next to that one. And even and though I was trying to bait it, even though I was trying to, I think there was a lot of robbing coming from, from that one. So I do believe there that was a cause for that hive to struggle. Um, if that hive, if I can catch another hive, I probably wouldn't put it. If you see my bee apiary now, I've got that one to the side. I've kind of kept it a little bit to the side because of that. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's a good turn off, you know, um, to say, OK, yes, they're more aggressive. But for us, they're they're more productive, too. So. You know, it, it works out good. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, we don't uh, supplement feed our bees. We don't give them sugar water. Uh, that's why we actually, that's why ours, um, our, we learned something. A lot of our honey crystallizes a little bit quicker than most beekeepers yeah. around here. And it's not because we're pulling it too soon. It's because we have a higher glucose uh, yield in our honey. Which is a cool thing. If you look it up, that actually well, makes your honey more desirable. We also have chose not to feed That's our right. So we don't either. do sugar water. Now, I will probably, because it's been so dry around here, I may go ahead and put out a watermelon or something like that to put it and let it let them get the, the water and the nutrients out of the watermelon. But we will see. Uh, right now, they're doing good. We're actually just a full fall flow. So it's going to be great. Uh, VW Family Farm, I have not. That's kind of me and Missy talked about this last year about trying to figure out if we're going to um, queen, queen rear. Um, the, my, my mentor, who is a huge bee farmer, they have about 60 hives. They make, man, just gallons and gallons of honey. They've got like 50, 50 well, gallon high. drums of well, honey. Well, they have like 50 something but, um, hives. Yeah, they have, over, they have over 60 now. He does queen rearing uh, and they change their queens out every spring. Uh, I'm not there yet because I just try to let mine do natural, um, a natural development. If, if I'm losing a queen or they're trying to swarm, I'm going to take that queen out and I'm going to try to let them naturally put a queen back in there. However, if I get queenless and I can't seem to make a new queen from some of my other, he's always got queens available because he's always changing out his queens, which is, is a good thing because he has strong, strong bees. It's almost like I think a registered bulls, a registered herd of cows. If you have good bees and you're making your own queens from those bees, it just makes your hive stronger. And, and he has done a great job at that. So I have not done queen Loving really Ivy yet. Farms so. and honeybees are the only bees I like. My neighbor's honeybees like my garden. And if I sit long enough watching the goats, they come and sit on me. I talk to them. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> our bees like to come to our saltwater pool. Or our front fountain. Yeah. We see them pretty regularly around the house. But, hey, that's amazing that they're in your garden. You'll reap the benefits yep. from that. Our blueberries. I believe garden. our blueberries did better this year because of our bees. Yeah. I, I really do. So. <clears throat> so that's. um, That's pretty <laughs> interesting about. The queen, I mean, it's all really, really interesting. I would say that they are very, very unique, just amazing little creatures. Ben, very, let me know cool. how that goes. I'd like to, I'd like to, to look into that too. Uh, we hadn't got into it yet, but I'd like to, I'd like to look into that. Um, the cool thing about bees is when you start reading about them, 
it's like they're always wanting to throw a coup de tie. You know, the queen's the boss, but if she's not laying good enough, they want to kill her. And it's just crazy, they're man. Very, very interesting. It's, it they're is very a, cool. It is cool. It is real cool. But so. I would recommend for those who were saying they were interested, learn as much as you can. Learn, learn about them. I would recommend learning about them as much as you could first. Um, so that way that when something is going south, you'll be able to recognize gotcha. the signs. And don't get me wrong. You will never catch bees. Bees are going to, I try to learn as much as I can, but they're going to escond. They're still going to do They're going to still thing. leave. They're going to still swarm. They're going to still have hive beetles and wax moths. You can do all you can. So that's the whole point of when we talk about queen rearing or we talk about splitting, you need to make sure that you are, are trying to do as much as you can because you're going to lose some. I mean, we've yeah. lost probably, we started off with um, three, then we went to four. Uh, we got to seven, then we went down to two, and now we're back. We went up to 18, and now we're back to 14. So you're constantly all over the board with it. And it's not because um, it's, it's not because <laughs> you're bad or good. It's just that's the way the, and their, their livestock, you have to look at bees' livestock. Has a land of milk and honey. Absolutely. Y'all do too. That's right. Canaan land. Did Max <laughs> Canaan land is our new name. We're so. actually learning about that in Bible <laughs> with the kids. No, but bees are my favorite. Uh, I love them. They are great. So, um, so what's left on the agenda to talk about? Well, we talked we about the cows, the, the chickens. The bees. That was kind of disappointing. Everybody needs a flamethrower. I don't know if I've thrown that yeah, out there. Somebody so. mentioned the flamethrower earlier yeah. when we were talking, and I didn't get to bring it up. Um, were you saying that me? No. Are you condescending that I talk too much? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um. If you don't have a flamethrower, Bow Farm, I, it was Bow Bo Farm. Bo, yeah, said that you you um. <laughs> you watched that video. That yeah, and he said <laughs> it helped him to get his butt out in the garden and get his going. I was a while ago. I had a little grass coming up between my peas. I was like, I need to hoe that. Missy's like, let's flamethrower it. So I was happy that she she is became a pyromaniac. <laughs> Easiest way to start your campfire too. That's yeah. right. Well, I haven't messed with it any. But, she wants um, to. I know it. I see her. She wants to just. I'll take a video of her doing it. Probably would if I got the chance. She's a pyromaniac. But I mean, I'm like, don't get out there and hoe it. We just bought that thing for you know, kill the grass, kill it. Don't hoe it. Kill it. <laughs> It does weeds real good. Remember, grass, you got to stay on it because it's got a coating on it. So it's kind of hard to kill grass, but it's just fun because you get to just go after Don't it. Don't hoe it. Kill it. <laughs> we need to get a shirt made that says that. Don't hoe it. Burn it. Kill it. <laughs> That's probably been the funnest thing I've done lately in a long time. I'm not going to lie. It's, yeah, it was a blast. Fun. I like having an excuse to use it. So. 5VW. They're, See you, they're, Ben. They're not coming to HOA, are they? Or are they? I don't know. BW, are y'all going? Yeah, I think y'all are. I think they talked about going. So I can't. There's. I know there's some that aren't going and some that that are. So. Yeah, we um. So we so a lot of transitions. Yes. Hey, we'll Yay, see y'all there. We'll good. try to meet well, up. We'll see y'all in a few weeks then. Um. You know, for me though, we. This has been a crazy time of year. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, just trying to get everything ready. I feel like we can't get it all caught up, and that's usually how I feel in spring. But for some reason, well, all it's just our been tomatoes crazy. have finally all died off. Right, and we we I need grew these to we, potatoes. We grew these potatoes. Are you losing your mind? Those are pumpkins. That's what I meant. Pumpkins. I'm sorry. Rewind this. Rewind. Rewind. This what were you talking about? Our, you talking tomatoes or potatoes? This what did is I say? one of our pumpkins. We went with these like faint white. Uh, oh, this is one of our pumpkins. What are these called? Pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, gosh. Um, all of our tomatoes have played out, and we have um, we have um, started the transition into our fall stuff, and we have several things, seeds and stuff that we need to get planted. But unfortunately, it's been so dry and hot here. Um, we've kind of just held off on a lot of that stuff. Here is two other pumpkins. I wasn't planning on getting these off my table and showing y'all these, but this is another form of pumpkin that we grew out in our pumpkin patch. Um, and I've just used those to display it around the house, which has been pretty cool. Um, the ones you see back there, we did not grow. I would have loved for mine to probably get that big, but my husband planted them in a spot where we were banking we on having water. our rainwater catchment 
and we have our rainwater catchment containers, but I've not built a shelter thing for it to actually catch the rain. So they didn't get watered hardly any. The few times <coughs> that it has rained has been the only rain that it's gotten. So I definitely feel like the size of our pumpkins have taken tomato sizes or potato sizes. Potato. But that is a pumpkin. <laughs> is that a pumpkin? Pumpkin. <laughs> oh. Wow, took the leg off of her. Well, we dropped. Well, you didn't. I did. I accidentally dropped our queen on the ground. Yeah, huge. <laughs> and uh, But we found her and put her back in, and she's done great. Yeah, Misty dropped a queen, and that was I thought our he was best gonna, queen. It was our best queen. I our thought he was going like, to lock me in a chicken coop and not Unlocked. let me come in the house that night. But we got her back, and she's doing good. That's our best hive, though. It, that was our best hive. I didn't get to finish reading the bottom of it, though. <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Ghost pumpkins. That's pretty funny. I, I'll be honest with I you. I actually <laughs> don't know what the name of those were. The ones that I got the seeds out of last year, they were like huge and they were pure white. They were almost like the Cinderella kind. But then I had some that were not the Cinderella looking kind. They were just your regular shaped white kind. But all of those were seeds that I got from out of our pumpkins last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And the ones that we bought didn't grow. <clears throat> It was just the seeds that I killed from the pumpkins last year. Single man, we're going next year. So you please have the courage to come talk to us. We're losers. So we, we would love to talk to you. So come talk to us. Uh, but we'll be at Baker Creek next year. Um, you know, on Queens, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Craig. Craig would know because Craig, most of these are from Craig's seed probably. I think so. Um one thing that uh, I try not to do, I, I know everybody, a lot of beekeepers say, I always try to find my queen. I always try to find my queen. And I'm not saying I don't. I, I, I do want to look for her, But I try to be less um, invasive of my hives as possible. So, so if, if we find evidence yeah, if we of find, her, If we if find closed brood and brood. open brood, um, and, and if she's on that frame, then of course, we're going to look at it. But instead of us going through every brood box or instead of us going through everything we see evidence of her uh, we're, we're good. good that's right as long as i don't see any evidence of anything else going wrong i'm gonna put that back and be less invasive um we use well and i think that's better on them too mm -hmm. we use um a two deep uh we use lane cross i mean lane trough hives but we use a two deep method. So we use two big deep boxes that we pretty much call the queen boxes. Now we'll take some honey out of there if it's overlapping or if she's what they call a honey locked. But other than that, we pretty much leave that for her. So she has plenty of food, uh, plenty of room to lay, which ultimately makes our honey supers up top do better. So if we don't have to be invasive to her mm -hmm. and go down to her bottom box, we try not to, unless there is a reason for us to go down there. Um, so we, we that's and it's been successful for us so far. So. When United we stand was talking about his process of what he was doing to get the formation of queen cells right. to stop, and we've we've had to do that. That's we've right. also had to destroy new queen cells. But um, we try to catch ours, too. United we stand. I know you probably do too. We try not to let them get to that point. If we see that they're they're trying to want to swarm. If we see a lot of drone cells coming in, that's that's a little abnormal. We're gonna go and start taking care of that before it even gets to that point. Uh, if if we see our queen is, is not on the frame or she looks like she's flyweight, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to be as proactive as, as possible. As much as we don't want to split off, I mean, we have 13 hives right now. That's that's all doing really well. Uh, our goal is not to just make tons of hives next year just because of space and, and, and you know. We really did that this year. Right. This was our year that we really We love bees, but at the same hive. time, if you grow to, you know, 20 and 30 and 40 hives, that is a major mm -hmm. undertaking. So for us, this next year, I don't really know what we're going to do. Last year, we were like, hey, queen cell is split, queen cell is split, and they are all successful splits. Uh, we split, we take off, we do a, uh, we don't do any walk. We did two walkway splits, but most of our splits came from us taking them uh, over two miles away. Yeah. 
he was say, they were saying keep track of your queen and her That's health right. is the most important thing you can do. You're right because she's going to be the one that ultimately breaks. I have makes your break. I you. have one queen that's two years. That's over two years. The rest of my queens are all this year. So they're all they were all virgin queens and they all were mated this year uh, in early spring and have laid heavy in spring and fall. Actually, our fall flow is looking pretty promising so far. So Craig said the white pumpkins make a really good pumpkin pie. You know, that's one thing I have never made is a pumpkin pie. I love them. I, I I'm going like to have to try my hand at one. I'm not a big year. pumpkin fan, but like pumpkin bread or pumpkin pie, I actually like. And I, I told I've you never all, done anything. I told you I, I love Hoss Tools. They did a video. They do their um, row. I think it's called Row by Row. It's they're kind of like their, their uh, sit down. I guess you'd call it their podcast almost, but they did one, and this guy, he cut his pumpkin up, and he was showing ways he eats his pumpkin. Mm -hmm. He made that pumpkin look so good. So I was thinking, man, I need to try that. So I've never done anything with pumpkins, but I, I, I think I'm going to try to start that this year. Well, Hive of the Homestead, I'm not sure where y'all are located. We would, if, I don't want to leave all our honey because if we leave all our honey, it may be too much. Uh, we've done that before, and it caused actually more damage because then they honey locked themselves. Um, but down here in deep south, you know, if they got a good deep box full and maybe two or three frames in the second one. Oh, you're so you're not far from us. Uh, we usually leave about seven or eight major full honey um, foundations. I and mean, that's what we leave. And once we do that, uh, and it, yeah, that's right. You know, we stand, we, we go down to one brood chamber if we see that there's an issue where they're trying to grow too much or we see that there's too many bees and then they're trying to find room and we don't want to split. We have done that. And we've actually taken two back to uh, single brood chambers uh, for sure. We've done that this he year. He said he replaces his queen about every three or four <clears throat> years. He keeps track of them. Yeah. So far ours is done. We had, we had two hives year last and a half year. Into it. Our, our last, we had two hives when we first started that, that they kept killing their queen. I, I don't know why they were not satisfied. And we finally got to the point where we actually placed queens from another hive in there with their bees, with a lot of open and closed brood, and it solved the problem. I think we just kind of got the nutty ones out and just had good bees come back in there. So we just kind of retrained two of those hives. The hive and the homesteads are said so they're not going to pull fall flow, That's just let saying. them have yeah. a strong winter. Do y'all do that every year, or is that just because something y'all are watching this year, y'all are going to allow them to keep that? I'm the homestead. Our our fall flow uh, tends to be a little bit better seller for us uh, for a lot of honey people. I <laughs> so like that. Roasted pumpkin seeds are so good. I've never. Have you ever had roasted pumpkin seeds? I, I have, have but I've never ate them. You know what? If you if you don't know this, pumpkins are very good as a dewormer for pigs and chickens. chickens. Yep. So um, that's last what I did last year with our pumpkins when we were taking every all of our fall stuff down, getting ready, preparing for Christmas. Um, I would just cut the top out and I scooped all the seeds out and then I kind of not really minced up, but I made a little bit smaller pieces and fed every bit of it to the chickens. We didn't have pigs at the time yeah. and fed every bit of it to the chickens. And then I come in and cleaned my seeds mm -hmm. real good. And I had these, the big containers that we were getting all of our Christmas stuff out with. I just put those, <clears throat> put those big containers, put all the seeds on wax paper on those big containers and just put them up in the top of our garage and let them totally dry. And we have seen amazing results with. See you, Howie. See y'all guys. We will get your hat. Those. I promise you. It might take a week to get all the way up to Canada, but <laughs> it'll get there. Um, but anyway, we've seen amazing results with those seeds. So we bought some from the store. They did terrible. The ones that I killed did amazing. Um, do you see United We Stand, since you said that comment, do you see that what I've noticed is once if you've got one okay. getting ready to swarm um, and once they have a queen cell and if that queen cell is almost in full maturity, to me, I, I don't see how you can stop that. I don't say you can stop that process. I always split because I'm scared that if I don't, I've tried before where we've cut those out and, and try to utilize those ever, ever somewhere else. But it seems like they've already got the smell. They're going to they're going to swarm. That queen's already ready for flyweight. And they're preparing for this new queen. It seems like they're going to split anyway. So instead of them letting them swarm, we'll go ahead and try to proactively split. That's what I did. I don't know if that's the right way or I don't know if you've seen that, too. But to me, it seems like they if you know if they're getting ready to swarm or they're getting ready to 
to make those drone sales. Um, if you see that the queen's not laying her good pattern, I try to be proactive and split on. Um, yeah, I agree. It's all about the queen. But like it, to me, what we've seen is sometimes if we had a weak queen, they 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 almost then you see tons of queen sales, and it seems like they just they push her out a little little quicker. So for us, instead of trying to save that hive just as one. I'm going to go and take that queen out. And even if I take her out and take out one of the queen cells and get rid of her, period, I'll go and split and take them off because it seems like they're ready to split. So I'm going to split them anyway. And that worked good. I only had one. I think we actually lost only. Did we lose any splits this year that we did? I know we lost some swarms, but did we actually lose any splits? I don't think we lost any splits. So just the swarm you know, from the, it was after those people come and sprayed. When they come and sprayed, um, that was it. We stopped to go to Chick fil A <laughs> in Mississippi Monday, and as soon as I heard the cute accent of the girl at the window, I thought, you all, our kids immediately. So she sounds like that. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> you can't go to a better place than Chick fil A. If you're going to eat right. fast food, you might as well eat Chick fil A. So. That's all right. And most people down here <laughs> in the South, we just, you know, we're country. I mean, I don't know. Southern country people call it all kinds of different stuff. If we come to Georgia, Y'all would have an accent to us. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everywhere you go. Yeah. Though. Everybody. We went to, Mich we went to Michigan. I was like, what? You know, these people actually talk like Canadians or something. I don't yeah. know. Wow. Four that's swarms. right. You know, we talked do about, good, but we have talked about, I think we're going to actually bait some boxes this coming spring. We have a lot of raw land that we could bait in. So. And not only that, like we, it's a, Mary and Luke had tons yeah. of swarms on their property, y'all. So I think that we're going to, we've talked about, we've never caught a swarm, but I think we are actually going to try our hand at that this year. We did that, you know, we stand, we removed her. I uh, actually took her to a different apiary into a, uh, when we split. We actually took a queen out of another one because she wasn't as strong and put that that new queen that we took out of another one in, in a little candy box. I mean, in a little uh, queen queen uh, queen catcher. Yeah, queen excluder. So that's what we did with her, too. Well, we've been on here almost an hour. I think we've I covered everything that has gone. I mean, it's, it's really been crazy. And this is not a tomato. It is a pumpkin, correct? It's a pumpkin. <laughs> Um, I think we've covered everything that's happened that I think the thing that probably had me most upset this week was um, or this past week. How do you say, how do you say bull? Say bull. Bull. <laughs> Illinois Boyle. is boil. Boil. I've been around some people and I've heard them and that was the first thing I was like, bull. what did you just say? <laughs> just bull it. Just bull it. <laughs> B-O-U-L. Bull. Yeah, Illinois says boil, which is not how we say it here. <laughs> oh gosh! Look, I'm I, I'm really bad about making up words too. So go back, watch some of our videos. Like montherish is a that's a good one. Yeah, I did say montherish one time. And look, I'm gonna be honest with you too. When I'm recording, I don't feel comfortable. I, so we're we're terrible at vlogging. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, we are we are terrible. I'll, I'll repeat. Like today, I watched my no video. No, in Illinois. Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. <laughs> Makes up words. It. I do. I'm horrible at it. You know what's so funny is <laughs> when we do videos, though. Like I watched the one from today, and I, I think I repeated myself like three times and said the same thing. And I'm like, why did I say that? And then why did I edit that out? Tell you, we're idiots. <laughs> well, I um a lot of times I do find myself getting kind of nervous. I like this stuff. I really enjoy, but then when I'm talking to myself, it's different. So I don't know. I don't know if any other YouTubers struggle with that, but I I really do. I, when I'm talking to myself, it's kind of awkward. So I don't know. Maybe that's why I make up words. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. All right, guys. Well, thank y'all so much uh, for being here. At New Irish Republican Brotherhood. Hey, thank you for dropping in. Um, we are actually close down for the night, though. Uh, but thank you for coming by. And we're going to make up more words and more videos as they come on. So thank y'all for coming by. And we hope that y'all have a great night. Happy homesteading, y'all. And God bless.